let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Linda Gallagher is the author of the charming tale, The Distant Lighthouse. This story is a metaphor for all of our lives. It's noted that each of us lives this life. There's a tendency to lose sight of the value and meaning of our existence as we do that. Linda's story demonstrates that each of us has a reason for being here. But when we come up against obstacles, oftentimes we succumb to the challenges, forgetting that there is strength, power, and light within all. And as we awaken to that fact, we rediscover ourselves once again being on purpose and experiencing the true joy of living. This tale is based on Linda's life experience. Linda Gallagher has been inspiring and cheering many folks to turn in the direction of indwelling light within her hearts for many years, in fact, for 46 years. She's been the director of a spiritual and musical center in Martinez, California since 1990. Her own recovery from addiction in 1976 propelled her to serve and assist others to break the bondage of any self-destructive behavior. Linda's life experiences, including the sudden death of her beloved music partner, set the stage and road where she found the ultimate solutions to one's true joy and fulfillment in life. And that solution, Linda says, is selfless love. Linda Gallagher, inspirational singer, teacher, addiction counselor, spiritual director for a Center for Freedom, and author of The Distant Lighthouse, is our guest on This Week in America. Linda, welcome to the program. A pleasure to have you with us. Hi, Rick. I'm so happy to hear your voice and to be able to be here and to share this wonderful message from the book, The Distant Lighthouse. It is a a powerful message and so many elements to it, layers that we'll be talking about during the course of the program today. Linda's got a website, thedistant-lighthouse.com. I'll give you that as we go through the program. I talked a little bit about your background, the importance of the background has on who you are today. Let's talk about that a little bit and writing and, and authoring things, a very talented writer as well as a musician. A little bit of your background and and tell us where you are today. And have you been doing this all of your life? It seems like it, you're very good at writing and the musical aspect. Well, you know, uh, I would say that, for example, this, this particular book comes out of a result of being having in the book, I use the word lostness a sense of loss, of losing one's uh, capacity to know what life, the joy of life, how to live a life that is a, a freeing and a freedom of coming from one's own soul light. I was a young person going through a lot of challenge in the upbringing that I was given and became uh, addicted to alcohol primarily in order to dull the feelings that I had and uh, give me some false sense of who I was. And at 30 years of age, I found myself on the doorstep of Alcoholics Anonymous to begin a huge transformation in the way I look at life, look at myself, and to begin to arouse the sleeping Spirit that was waiting in my soul to wake up and to lead the way. So this story came to me at a very difficult time in my journey. I was yes. nine years. I was nine years sober. I was thirty. Uh, tw- excuse me. When this when this uh, particular I would say um, uplift that w- started to wake me up at nine years sober. I was married to a magnificent soul. He and I became spiritual uh, partners in uh, and went out in music. We were signed by the largest concert agent in the world, Columbia Artists. We were about to go on a nationwide tour and we thought he had the flu and eight days later he was dead of acute leukemia. He was uh, the main one in as far as he was the writer of the music, he was the instrumentalist, and I was the harmony behind his voice. And we, it took us everywhere. And it was just amazing because we had met in recovery. 
and we were just uh, brought together in just the most grace-filled, loving way, and we started walking towards God and learning what life was about together, which was about true love, selfless love, and service. And so when he passed, I didn't play any instruments. I was not a soloist. I ended up living in a little room for three and a half years by the grace of God teaching me how to pick up first one of the ukuleles. He was from Hawaii. He could play many instruments and to start letting myself be taught how to put the words I was feeling in my heart onto this ukulele. And it started taking me to various places to share spiritual energy that was coming through the music. And so up to this date, I have recorded 14 albums. They're all over the world um, by the grace of God. But the this story came, or this message came to me when I was living in this little room after David died. And I was uh, just sorrowful, as you can imagine, despairing. Oh, yes. I had nine, yes. nine major losses that came right at his death. So I had nothing, but I had everything. I had a mustard seed of faith. And so my meditations, I became a daily meditator. I became a student of truth. And my yearning for God to take me over became huge. But I still had this sorrow and fear. One morning, uh, early in the morning, when I was living in my little room, I'd go to this restaurant and I'd have my egg and cup of coffee. And all of a sudden, that presence within my heart started telling me what had happened. What happened to me? And I started writing madly this message that I was being given. And it was the message that 36 years later came out of a file folder. And I was prompted to now I heard it's time for you to give this story to the world because it's the message for everyone. Interesting. And so, and yes, it's. if you're just joining us, Linda Gallagher is our guest on the program. The book is The Distant Lighthouse. Her website is thedistant-lighthouse.com. Book available at Amazon, pageturner.us, all of the places. Go back and pick up that story. I want to let people know in case they just tuned in who we were talking to and how to get information on the guest. You'll find all information on Linda on our website, thedistant-lighthouse.com. Remarkable pain that you went through and then turning that into a, 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 a light, a beacon for, for so many other people. Pick up with the story, if you would, please. Well, yes. You know, one of the things that when we have suffering, one of the, the beauties of surrender is when you begin to open your heart to something greater, which I call it a higher power, I may call it God, I may call it other things that have been prompted in with deep within myself. But what we discover, or what I've discovered, is that every single situation, like the sudden death of my husband, uh, brought me such a surrendered heart to be guided, truly guided, not by the world, because I still had accumulations of the world within my consciousness, even though I was now a uh, growing sober person, living the principles of truth, etc. But the point is, is that the suffering itself really started cleansing my inner world in a way that I had never known. And it's all in the, the message of this book that the heart is the place that has to be cleansed because it's accumulated ignorance and duality whereby there is a great energy, there's a light and a love that is within us waiting to break through when we're ready to say yes. One of the things I wanted to say was that another experience, uh, that which I would say is another primary time of transformation was I was diagnosed in uh, 2014 with a massive brain tumor, and I had had a symptom not knowing it was a tumor for many, many years. I didn't know that a tumor was growing on my brain, and it was growing on the memory part of your brain. So it was a very difficult time because of, of the 
um, what I was experiencing. But what had happened to me was I was all of a sudden had a massive seizure and uh, finally called the doctor because I thought this was all something else. And um, I was rushed into a seven hour operation and the, the prayer life that had been accumulating in me for so long and the acknowledgement of this light within me, which is part of the message in the book, was so huge that I could experience this holy presence in this experience before I was operated on and told they Amazing. didn't know if I would come, they didn't know if I would live or whether or not if I, if I, would I die, if I came back, if I would be distorted because of this situation. And within two days, uh, so I was in the hospital two days, I got back to my keyboard at our center and found out that my arm, which had been, uh, I wasn't able to play the guitar anymore. I had to teach myself to play the keyboard because of all the pain, but all the, everything as a result of this love that I experienced before I went into the operation. I've never known such love and fearlessness knowing that it was all in the care of this great presence. I call it God. And, and, and the thing was, is I was totally healed, totally healed. And uh, as a result of that, I've become somewhat of an evangelist. Some, I, I use that word and I laugh about Ooh. that. But the truth is, yes. is that the reality is real. We have to open ourselves, if we want to be free, to the experience of this great holy presence. We call it Jesus, we call it Christ, we call it Swami, we call, however it comes, this is a reality and it's simply waiting for our yes. Yes, I am ready to allow you to be the mind, the thoughts, the words, the feelings, the actions, and to go through us in order to be the message for the world. And that's what this book is about. The book is doing so well internationally. The book is by Linda Gallagher, G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R. The book is called The Distant Lighthouse. You'll love the cover of the book. And uh, I want to talk about a T-shirt that Linda has on for the video of this here in, in just a second. Uh, Linda's website is thedistant-lighthouse.com. Book available at Amazon, pageturner.us. All of this information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, Linda, tell me about the T-shirt that people are seeing if they're watching the YouTube version of this, the, the video that you're that you're wearing. I, I love this. It's colorful, and there's a powerful message on the on the T-shirt as well, isn't there? Uh, yes, I would say that the message uh, that cir circumvents the um, photograph or, or the drawing, actually, it's it's a drawing that somebody did for me. It says, "What have I forgotten?" I need to know. And that's the underlying message. That's the hook of the message of the book. We're all forgetting. We may be forgetting our keys. We may be forgetting sometimes somebody's name. But the big question is, I have forgotten the truth of what I am and the true purpose as to why I am here. And that is the underlying solution of the message in the Distant Lighthouse book. It will answer the question to what have I forgotten? I need to know. Am I ready to know the answer to that question? It's interesting as you read the reviews. First of all, people say of various faiths, it, it doesn't make any difference what faith you are. If, if you have faith or not, this book will help you. It's designed for everybody. Others talk about the fact that I love reading every day. Sometimes I go back and reread. It's a, it's a constant companion that helps me get through life. They're talking about the book by Linda Gallagher, our guest, The Distant Lighthouse. What do you hope would be maybe the major talking point, a uh, pointer that, that readers should take away after, after reading a copy of The Distant Lighthouse? What are some of the themes that you hope that they, that they recall and implement in their lives? Well, I would say, you know, in the book itself, when you go to various pages, there's like a little 
uh, one liner at the bottom of the page. Like I'm looking at one right now. It says, you must make remembering me, and it's a capital M, the most important thing in your entire life. That this sharing of this message will give us some very simple to-go places on a daily basis. That if you open the book, no matter what page you open it to, you may see this beautiful drawing that helps you to feel the message underlying the drawing or the message, yes, underlying the drawing. It's so beautifully laid out that those individuals whose heart are, hearts are ready to open will definitely receive a very powerful meal to their inner world because our soul is hungry for the truth. And this message of the book is the living truth of the living God. And you, I'm here to stand in that light. Yes, and you are living proof of that, and you see it literally in your life every day, don't you? And you, as you work with people at the center, as you work with people uh, as an addiction counselor, a spiritual director, you see the results that this really, it not only turned your life around, but it's working so well in others, isn't it? I want to tell you something very quickly from what you just said there. Yesterday, I sat with a woman for an hour and a half whose husband just died suddenly three weeks ago. And she and her husband have come to the center on and off for years. In fact, he was a big part of uh, doing some of the landscape architecture here at the center. She said to me, if I hadn't come, to the center, I would not be able to deal with what I'm dealing with right now. But she said, what I realized, listen to this now. First of all, they were on their anniversary, uh, this beautiful couple. We married them here 11 years ago. And uh, all of a sudden, they were watching TV, some program, and he said, I don't feel very good. The next thing you know, they're calling 9-11. An ambulance comes. She feels that they took some of the tests and he was going to be okay. And she goes to the hospital with her mother to, you know, wait for the, him, maybe take him home. Who knows? And she goes and the, and, uh, the doctor comes out and says, uh, Rob had a major heart attack and he died. Wow. And she went into his, she said, do you want to see him? And she said, of course. So, of course, she, she goes in there and she says, I knew that that wasn't Rob. Because, and she tells me, because I have been coming and praying and meditating and learning, I knew that he was fine, that he was spirit, and that that was just his flesh, not who he is. So I'm, I'm orchestrating their memorial coming up. It's going to be October 9th. I've done many memorials over the years for animals. Also, we have a pet memorial here yes. at the center, you know, and it's just, uh, it's just uplifting people to realize it's not what we believe that life is about. Life is an eternal reality. And we are these magnificent soul lights. We are the light of God. We are the light of God. And that's what this message of the distant lighthouse, not only confirmed but reaffirmed in my own journey all those years ago that that's what is going on for you you've just forgotten who you really are and you are the spirit of the living lord yeah that's a powerful story and it's you're there helping people on a day-to-day -day basis and doing that even on a much broader scale by the book, The Distant Lighthouse, which again is doing well internationally. The book is by Linda Gallagher. A minute or so left in the program, not nearly enough time, but I mentioned in the beginning, uh, selfless love and the importance of that. Just to sort of summarize how we can focus on that and, and why we should be focusing on that. Well, you know, one of the biggest things I would say out of my spiritual journey in this lifetime is there it's so simple the mind makes it so complicated and it's really about love all serve all that we are called to be a transparency for this great unlimited selfless love because love is the healing power 
Love is what heals us. Not all this. Yes, we use all these other things, but the reality is, is love brings us back to our heart. And that's where the light of God is within all of us. So it's like we can just let go and let God and be willing to know that with God, all things are possible. Reaching people through her music and through her books. This book is The Distant Lighthouse. Are you working on, uh, on another book now? Well, I have a, a few other fo- file folders, <laughs> kind of like this within a With file the, yes. folder, you know. But uh, I'm so busy in the bright way of taking care of the center. We're two and a half acres here. When we came here 26 years ago to this property, it was all dirt. And now it is a unbelievable sanctuary and an oasis. So hundreds of trees, vines, bushes, cabins, people come. We're 24-7, you know. So the other stories are are messages, basically different stories, but the same underlying message, which is all about truth. I'm a truth student. And so my job is to keep passing it forward. And in the book, it says one of the things that Lighthouse realized was that it just had to simply give itself freely to the world. And that's what, by the grace of God, I've been called to do. You are a truth student and a truth teacher and reaching so many people with uh, Linda's book, The Distant Lighthouse by Linda Gallagher, G-A-L-L-A-G-H-E-R. Her website is thedistant-lighthouse.com. Book available from pageturner.us, amazon.com. And get all the information uh, on a website, thisweekinamerica.us. It will link you on to Linda's websites and information to uh, to buy copies of the book there and information on other aspects of, of Linda's life, as she's talked about with the music. Linda, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank you so much for joining us. Hopefully we can do this again. Thank you for, for being on the program and inspiring so many people. Oh, Rick, I love you. Thank you. Have a blessed day, everyone. You as well. The Distant Lighthouse by Linda Gallagher. Information on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on today's program right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.